Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome. Today we are looking at the topic God's attributes are God Himself. God attributes are God Himself. That is the, we don't want to use the word qualities or characteristics, but sometimes we are short of words each time we are talking about somebody or someone that is beyond all comprehension and definition. So, an attribute for the sake of definition or looking at it are things that God has said to be true about himself there are certain things that they are i mean anything of god is infinite and numberless but at least the ones that have been revealed from scriptures whether directly or indirectly we can term that as the attributes of god so god has revealed certain things to be who he is they are, he has revealed certain things that is his nature or his essence or the way he actually would work and so we can term that as being an attribute or attributes of god some of them are things he shares with his creatures like love wisdom and holiness in which he desires for us to have be like him in also some are things that he doesn't share with any creature things like his sovereignty his infinity is being without beginning so we'll be looking at a few of them today but suffice to say that the attributes of god are what god has revealed or has said to us to be true about him that is these are things whereby in every situation god will be consistent with his attributes it's not going to change these attributes are going nowhere they existed before creation itself and they will be in existence long after creation so he does not god does not possess his attributes like qualities you know like as humans when we hear attributes or characteristics or um the 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 way or the way of life or some attribute or what have you we tend to affiliate it with things that rightfully so because somebody could be nice and the next hour they could be nasty and so it's almost like these are things that they that is not themselves a person cannot be a male and the next hour or two they change into a female forget about all the crazy things people do around but the essentially their nature cannot change and so when it comes to god that's the way we should look at it that look whatever god has said to be himself they are not qualities that he has but rather they are who he is that's why we hear things like god is good we hear that god is love god is light that there is no no matter the circumstance no matter the situation those things do not change in him so god does not possess his attributes like uh, qualities like characteristics that are temporal or what have you they are actually who God essentially is so you would have to be on God or you will have to deny himself for him to part with any of those attributes so one of the greatest things we realize that the mightiest thoughts that can the mind can entertain on is on the person of God this is very critical. I could almost dare say that all the pillars of the Christian doctrine or the Christian faith hinges on that fact on the knowledge of the person of God. How we think of God, what we think of God, what is our perception, our conception, when that word God comes into our mind, that actually determines the level of our worship, daily, our daily activities because a low knowledge or concept of God is such that it would dictate how a person would behave. If a human, for example, thinks that God is um, a, um, like, a, like an angry judge just waiting to punish, that's the way they will pattern their life and almost, almost, I mean, without them saying this, that's how they will even treat others. That's why an, a good knowledge or a healthy knowledge of the person of God is very essential to our living on earth. So the weightiest word in any language is always the word for God. That is the, because we don't call the name of God in vain. And so in every language, because the author of every language we believe is God. And so for every language, the words that are used for God are very, very, and it's not just one word. Like for for me, my, my natural heritage is Yoruba and the names that we have for God are, I mean, several, numberless, and I believe in other cultures as well. So we realize that the person we are studying is someone that is beyond every comprehension. So that's why we never get to a point and we feel we've known enough. There's always more and more to know. So what comes to our mind when we think of God is the most important thing in our life. I think it was A.W. Tozer that mentioned this in his book, The Knowledge of the Holy One, that whatever comes to your mind 
Or maybe he quoted it. I think he quoted it from another church father. A lot of some of these things we really don't know what the what the original source. Oh, the original source will be the spirit, but the verse. So, so, but the concept is like anything that comes to your mind when you hear of God is what actually defines a person. So, if what comes to mind when the word God or the notion of God comes to our mind is such like um, a distant being. That tells that the consciousness of God being around, that person is limited in that area. This is why it is very critical because I believe one of our greatest assets in life is our knowledge of God. Maybe that's why the Lord was praying for this in John 17, that they may know you, the one true God. And always a lot of the prayers in the New Testament are that they might increase in the knowledge of Him. So you see that our healthy knowledge of God is very critical. It determines how we relate with one another. It determines our level and our quality of worship to God. It determines how much of our peace, joy that we experience. Those who know their God, they will be strong and they will do exploit. So nothing is easier to think not is easier than thinking. You really don't need a lot of energy, so to say, because every other part of the human body, you, there's motion involved, but thinking is so that you can do it. Um, even when you decide not to think, you've actually even thought. But yet, paradoxically, we could almost say that nothing is more difficult to think on than thinking well of God. And this is, um, we see some of this, especially in the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus, when he was rebuking the Pharisees and the Sadducees, because their concept of God was skewed. I mean, it was almost like a legalist and what have you. And so our thinking well on God is very, very critical. That's what makes med meditation to be something we look forward to, or God to be such a sweet being. The Lord said, I think uh, Psalm 34 verse 8, he said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So here, almost everywhere in scripture, God presents himself as a good God. And indeed, rightfully so, he is a good God. And goodness is one of the attributes we also look at. And it tells us to even, it's almost like God wants to be defined, wants us to perceive him as a good God. Psalm 136, that, uh, 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 Psalm 136 verse 1, that the message of the Lord for his good, oh, pray, oh give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his mercies endures forever. Exodus 34, God had told Moses, I will let my goodness pass before you. So all around is because God wants us to build a healthy knowledge of him. Even when he, nobody says God doesn't have, doesn't punish or is wrought as well, but he doesn't want that to be the first part you're knowing about him. It's not like it's a negative part. Before God ever uses his judgment and his wrath, he would exhaust every possible means to get people back to him. When they reject his offer for them to repent, then the other side of him is justice takes the place. So God's attributes are those qualities of his essence without which God will no longer be God. So take away those qualities if at all it's not possible. Just it's almost like saying that you have again, let me just use this point especially you have a laptop, you install all kinds of software in it and they are so valuable to you. But if it's possible in which in many cases you can uninstall those software, that laptop is no longer as valuable to you again as it was when those facilities were in it. We can't do that with God because there's nothing that is of him. So whatever if that is something that's why we said God's attributes are God Himself, because without those attributes, it couldn't be God. Without God being infinite, it can't be God. Without God being sovereign, we can't say He is God. Without God being holy, that is separate, we can't be bowing adoration of Him. Without God being the only wise God, we can't say that is the true deity. So His attributes are the varieties of the physical of the historical manifestation of his essence in creation. The essence of God is one. The nature of God is one. God is not, we don't think he has, it's just one essence in his being. But however, this essence manifests itself in different ways. So in this essence, we could say we have the wisdom, we have the law, and they are not different parts of God because God is essentially <laughs> one whole being. But this essence are actually what we believe actually manifest or maybe in his justice, for example, it's still the same essence, still the same one true God. When he's acting wise, it's not another person acting uh, in his wisdom, different from another one acting in righteousness, still the same essential being. So 
So God's attributes are not things distinct from Him. They are not things distinct from Himself. They are not things separate from Him. They are not things that He has to put on or He has to remind Himself of or borrow from something external. They are each God Himself. So that's why um, some of those attributes were personalized as essentially as well like in the case we quoted earlier or the scripture say God is love God is light God is good <laughs> also different things and expression that God uses to identify himself with this attribute because they are actually who he is and he desires that we know him in that platform it's a healthy knowledge because it will help us in our walk in the Christian faith so God's attributes are not distinct from himself they are actually who he is, who he has revealed himself to us. I say God that um, a lot of these attributes are things whereby they, they, that, that, that's what we could say that, that makes God separate from his creatures. They are the things, you know, you could have a Toyota, you could have a Honda, Mercedes. there are certain things that are distinct in them, maybe the shape, maybe the engine or what have you. When we come to God, we don't compare God. So what makes God separate from everything else, every creature, are uh, what we can call his attribute so these attributes are unchangeable in god they don't fluctuate there's no increase there's no decrease there's no fluctuation they are they, actually they are not only unchangeable but they've been with god ever since god has been and god has no beginning so um for the mercy of god for example the mercy of god was not the fall of man was not what is responsible for the mercy of god to, for the men for mercy to be battered in god that's why the mercy is called an eternal one it existed before man fell so the fall of man just brought into light what existed in god from eternity past and those things don't expire with god as well so because god is infinite this attribute can neither increase nor decrease nor can cease to be so there's no that's why i said i am the lord i change not it's the same yesterday today and forever so god is not wiser in the prior years than he is today he will not be more loving in another dispensation than it is today whatever it is is a it's an unbroken continuous now it remains the same it's no you see what is infinite cannot be measured because when you say something is increasing and decreasing is because there is a numerical matrix we're applying to it for example uh, someone let's say it's possible to measure love and to say the love is 45 percent okay tomorrow it is 82 because but god is inexhaustible is immeasurable so there is no metrics to be able to say it's increasing or decreasing that's why it's, the word is used as being eternal. That is, it's, it has no beginning. It's infinite. So none of these attributes exist independent of him. And so some of those attributes are communicable attributes or incommunicable attributes. And by that, communicable means that things that are attributes in which he desires and in his sovereignty, he shares with his creatures. Things like wisdom. He said, if any man lack wisdom, let him call upon me. And this law, for example, he has filled our heart with the Holy Spirit. He has shared about the Holy Spirit. In our, he has shared his love in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Romans 5.5. 5. So there are things he shares, but they are not things that exist independent of him. That's why wherever the attributes are, we could almost say that that is God at work because only God can put them to work. It doesn't mean the vessel has been has become deity or is God. No. It just means it's just a vessel through which God is using to manifest those attributes. So love is who God is. So another maybe the first one we are looking at is to say love is God. God is love. Meaning that God being love meaning that God always seeks the highest good of his creatures or the highest good of everyone because essentially we could summarize love in that context that is what is um, not thinking of its own alone at least looking at first corinthians chapter 13 some of the parameters it's not self-centered it's always looking out for the interest of other when god loves he is simply being true to himself when you and i love our creatures um it might not be because we are not love love is an attribute is something that we could say we could only god could bestow upon in our hearts uh, the things we call likeness and uh, the way the arts the, uh, the secular world uses love i'm not defining love by that context i'm saying that that seeks the highest good of another even to the extent that they don't mind to take a back seat so that another person could probably uh, value could be added to them and so we see that it's a it's it's to walk in love is warfare because you are denying yourself and now god now 
us manifesting in the flesh prove that love to us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son another attribute is the infinity and anything God is whatever attribute is you will find out that, that that attribute also cut across the other attributes infinity for example is God himself none is infinite but God and we don't have two finite beings infinite beings every creature was created as a finite being finite is what can be measured infinite is what cannot be measured or infinity it is immeasurable it is inexhaustible it exists by itself so god being his own infinity means that anything he is is infinitely so so the mercy of god is infinite the light of god is infinite the wisdom of god is infinite the power of god the righteousness everything god is that consistency of him being infinity of his uh, of his infinity or the infinitude of god as is often referred to will find that ingredient or that element in it so wisdom is another example god is absolutely his own wisdom proverb 4 proverb 8 we could say that wisdom is a person and so the person of God himself, God in Christ, the wisdom of God. So wisdom is a person, so his, his own wisdom. He needs none to make him wise. As First Timothy chapter 1, 16, 17 said, So now to the, the to, to the king eternal mother, the God who alone is wise. <laughs> that means in his own eyes, every other person is foolish without him giving them his own wisdom, giving them a part a drop of his wisdom and so the wisdom we are, wisdom is a communicable attribute of god because god desires for us all to walk in wisdom but we can't compare our own level of the wisdom we receive from him is like a drop from an ocean so god is absolutely his own wisdom so the wisdom and that wisdom is probably less defining us when the strategies god will use to accomplish a tax for the highest good of all in the uh in, in the in the in the in the best using the best method to accomplish the highest result so god's goodness is nothing but himself for example say oh taste and see that the lord is good that is goodness is like seeking the highest good of another person adding value he said how jesus, god anointed jesus who went about doing good for god was with him he was adding value wherever he is and so goodness we could also see it as um when we attribute to god that um attribute his majesty that is his kind-heartedness towards his creatures that is god not seeking the destruction god not seeking or god not having an ill will towards any creature we could term that as the goodness of God and God always points us that he wants to be defined by his goodness and that's why we see it across the Bible especially in the Psalms whereby we keep ascribing that he is a good God he gives all their fruit he causes rain on the just and the unjust also another attribute is the might of God or the power of God the strength of God is nothing but God himself he said put on the whole I said be ye strong in the Lord and in the power of his might the might of God is not something distinct from God because you can't take away all that's why his name is called the Almighty because you can't take away the might from him you can't separate him from any of these attributes so anywhere he is and it's almost like we will find the possibility that any of those attributes could be made manifest you know someone could have um, certain toolbox and maybe when they are going out they don't need all the toolbox they just go with a few and a situation comes and they forgotten the two. god's attributes are not like that wherever god is those attributes are ever available in the fullness of his being another attribute is the righteousness of god righteousness is who god is and righteousness there's the moral aspect of it in terms of god's holiness god always doing what is right and there's also a very key aspect that whatever god do whatever god does or is thinking is always right so righteousness is what makes it that even if god wanted to err or going to do something erroneous whatever we are thinking is erroneous we actually become right because god is righteous that is god cannot be wrong essentially that's what the term means god cannot be wrong and so it's like anything it does if it says good morning and it's night by the clock or outside if you look out it's no longer night it's it turns to everything just turns to to make it that god 
God is not the man that will lie. So righteousness is essentially God himself. That's why I said in Isaiah 54 that their righteousness is of me. Because his himself is our righteousness that he has imputed upon us. What a joy. So God's attributes essentially are God himself. Sovereignty, of course, is another example of incommunicable attributes. The sovereignty of God is the person of God himself. Sovereignty, we could define sovereignty as God doing what he wants to do when he wants to do it however he wants to do it with whoever he wants to do it and nobody can question him or nobody can hinder him from doing what is the pleasure of his heart that is absolute freedom to do as you wish and there is no power in heaven and earth that can thwart or challenge <laughs> that action of his so god's sovereignty is so and there are no two sovereign beings in the world so sovereignty is simply god himself that's why he's the sovereign king is the sovereign lord so any of those other titles god is sovereign in it. and it's a joy that sovereignty doesn't belong to a to a wicked god that would be terrible because there will be anarchy and we don't have two sovereign beings in the universe there can only be one or else there will be conflicts there will be clashes when you have two sovereign because one has to subdue itself its will to another so god is the sovereign one and we're kind of just touching on them a little bit and we have different videos by the mercy of god out there on the youtube page again where we looked at most of them individually and some of them we've had series of videos on it it helped for me it helps me in my worship adoration of god and also in my relationship with one another because i just simply see these attributes as things god is manifesting through us as his vessels so that we'll be a light wherever we go love is god himself we already talked about that so god himself is his own love and that love that gave up himself in the flesh to die to be a ransom for us he has nothing to gain from us being condemned to because we are the one that sinned against him in adam and yet he still he said no greater love can anyone do than to lay down his life for another holiness is god himself holiness by holiness man. There's a moral aspect of holiness and there's also the intrinsic or what we could almost term the majestic aspect of his holiness. Holiness simply means God is separate, God is set apart, God is distinct, God is different. It's not just, yes, the moral aspect of whereby God is separate from sin. I think that's just a little aspect, but much more is like God is distinct. There is no, God is in his own class. There is no uh, comparison to God. There is no... Um, superior to him there is none that can match him in whatever he is that's why the angels and the 24 elders the four living creatures and creation essentially that praise of holy holy are you separate 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 are you is in his own class that is he has no is utterly peerless he has no classmate is in his own category that is god is god by himself in anything in any of these attributes in his being in his deeds in his characters what a joy and so let's look at now when we say god's attributes are god himself we could find a few at least in the scripture amos 4 2 for example the scripture says god was swearing by his holiness let me read amos 4 verse 2 amos chapter 4 Amos chapter 4 verse 2. Amos 4 2 says, The Lord God has sworn by his holiness that lo, the days shall come upon you that he will take you away from the hooks and your posterity with fish hooks. So God swore by his holiness in Amos 4. Then if we go to Hebrews chapter 6 verse 13, we see that the same Holy Scriptures now say that God swearing by himself. And so verse 13, Hebrews 6, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. So we said God swearing by his holiness is essentially God swearing by himself. So that's why we could say that God's attributes are God himself. So when God decides to do certain things, he ascribes it in his word to be an attribute. And in another aspect, he says it's in himself. So we just like almost putting two and two together that look when he says this that means that is himself at work so god creates so we say and these attributes we could say they are in they are they are just an aspect so to say god is not a god is not a uh, it's not it's not a bunch of 
it's not like beans or created things that are a bunch of parts put together as one but sometimes we have to use what we can see to describe him who we cannot see <laughs> or so so it's, you could almost say that an aspect of god these attributes are different aspects we use it carefully and reverently but just a different dimension through which god manifests himself so god create and creation is another we looked at the first was god swearing by himself Genesis 1 talks about what? That in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So we say God, Elohim created. And we get into a place like Romans 1 20, where scriptures say that the invisible things were created by the, the power of God gave rise to that. Also Isaiah 44 24. But in Romans 1 20, for the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world have been clearly seen, being understood by the things which are made even is eternal power and god there so that they are without excuse that is the things we see in creation that they are also preaching and teaching god because maybe not god realizing not everybody might want to come to the scriptures to know god so they are without excuse by the things he has created that this whole universe couldn't be suspended in the air without i mean an ultimate power upholding it so his attributes are underived every attribute in any creature any virtue we see out there and any creature they are not anything good or desire what's having they are not attributes that originated from those creatures so i'm nice or i'm wise i'm faithful you're faithful you are patient those things uh, those virtues didn't originate from you they are allocated as we align with god they are allocated from to any creature from god but for god he didn't derive those attributes so we could almost say there is derived attributes and underived attributes god alone has this attribute so he is indebted to none for the possession of any one of them so any of these attributes god is not he owes no man or no creature thank you for them we owe him thank you for allowing us to be a partaker of this divine nature so his attributes are underived they are unsourced so to say they are not uh, they are not the essence of those attributes don't have their source in another in anything outside of god it's wholly inside or we could say in the being of god himself so these attributes are inseparable from one another so uh, for example someone could be very polite but though they are polite but they could be very uh unkept or dirty <laughs> so you can you, you can separate that this person is they're, 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 i mean they're they are not hygienic but they are very polite you can say but when it comes to the attributes of god you can't separate them because these attributes are almost we could almost say that inter penetrate into one another that um, it's almost like you could almost say that when the wisdom of God is at work this is the power of God in work I'm not saying they are the same thing essentially but it's just mean like the, God doesn't use his power without his infinite wisdom going ahead so before God uses his power his wisdom had already gone ahead that this is the best use of the power in this situation someone could be powerful and not wise that power will lead to the destruction of things or creatures but to have power and to have wisdom means that you're using the wisdom to use the power for what is intended to do for the wife for the good of all and not for the destruction of all so no one attribute no one attribute contradicts another so there's not one even when it appears for example people have said that oh god is merciful and meaning that how do you reconcile the mercy of god to the justice of God or to the uh, uh, to the uh, to the like, yeah the justice of God that or the wrath of God it's reconcilable because God didn't just show mercy almost like uh, I mean absent-mindedly God paid the price for the mercy that is flowing to us before mercy came to Israel the sacrifices of the animals were there he sat on the seat of mercy so there was a substitute before Christ coming and Christ coming now made it even more made into a reality so it's not at all that so his mercy is not at odds with his justice so he will actually be he will be unjust if he doesn't show mercy 
to anyone that believes in Christ because the justice of God was fully melted Isaiah 53 the justice of God the wrath of God was poured on Christ so the wrath that should come upon us God poured it upon himself in his son and so he's now justified that's what we call justification God said Romans 5 1 therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God. So the peace that is coming to us, the mercy, the goodness, the love of God we're experiencing, is not something that is just, God just made it happen arbitrarily. No, God went through the process to make it a reality. So we can say that God, mercy prevails over justice, as the scripture says, over judgment. His wisdom is also his power at work. Because we could say, how do we define the power of God for the sake of just having a definition? Power is that ability whereby you can execute your will regardless of the opposition. That is, no matter the contrary, you have a will, you have the resource, you have the technology, the manpower, the technical know-how, manpower to ensure your will or what you desire still comes to being regardless of whatever contrary force so the wisdom of god is essentially his power at work that's why we find that, that god created the heavens and the earth by his power and also the wisdom of god as well said the heavens were by his understanding the earth is by his wisdom so where we see the power of god at work we also see the wisdom out of god so that's why the wisdom of god is is not contrary or at variance with the power of god and the power of god as well it's not a variance with the wisdom of God. The love of God, for example, is His righteous wrath against any form of wickedness. Sometimes people, uh, I mean, in certain situations whereby the medical experts have to severe a part of the body away, it's not because that they hate it, it's because they are trying to separate that which is unproductive for that body, for that human, away so that it won't affect others. So when God, in His love, is when his wrath comes on the wicked it's still a loving god it's not like he's um it's not like uh uh god is extraphenic or it's changing colors no it's himself he doesn't want his earth or his creation to be polluted so out of that he says the father the child loves it is the child that the father loves that he chased him so the fact that god is love doesn't mean that uh he doesn't take certain tough calls because those tough calls eventually will be for the highest good of his creation. Also, he needs not suspend one attribute to activate another. So God does not need to... There are times whereby when we are acting and we are doing things, there are certain things that we have to suspend, certain things to be able because we are not omnipresent, we are not everywhere. Yes, we can multitask, but there's so much we can do simultaneously. So God doesn't need to suspend his love. So even when he's judging, it doesn't mean that that love has been hanged on the shelf. And now this is the judgment side of God. It's still a judging that it is motivated by love. That's why his love is righteous. His wisdom is righteous. His judgment is also a right. That means there is a good reason very good reason for the for those things so even in his justice it is still with good reasons that's why even before he judges there will be a lot of opportunity a lot of mediums god will try to use to avoid that aspect of him to be made manifest but when people turn down or look slightly upon his mess his, his call for them to to ask for repentance then indirectly what they've asked for is that other side that god is not it's not his inclination they say you are good he didn't say you are wicked no god is not a wicked god he does not divide himself to perform multiple tasks simultaneously so he's not in different parts of the world and he has to finish an assignment somewhere to be able to attend to another need as well how is doing it we don't know we should even try to know it's beyond what any finite brain can think so god is in which another topic will be doing by the mercy of god that is god's providence in creation how god is able to meet and 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 and, and how god is able to care for his creatures he has not left anything to his own so god does not divide himself to perform multiple tasks simultaneously he could decide to use means and he might decide not to use means like in the case of creation nobody was there at work with him he didn't have angels he didn't hire any laborers he performed everything <laughs> by himself so he doesn't divide himself to do anything so these attributes exist in god and are holy of him 
they exist in him and they are holy of him holy of him means that they are not partially in him they are not um uh, they are not remotely in him that he has to depend on something externally they are actually who he is take these attributes from god and we can't say god is no god is still god <laughs> You can't strip God of his sovereignty and expect that he's still going to be worshipped as the sovereign one. And so we see that these attributes are what makes God God. They are holy. They exist in him. They, they are who he is essentially. Because sometimes we use the word they are in him. It appears like it was installed in him. In him they are actually the essence of God. So God will never act contrary to his attributes. And why it's always good to know more about the attributes of God is because they help us in our worship of him. They help us to be able to predict not that we can predict his position because god is incomprehensible i mean it's beyond who can counsel but he has not made himself without a pattern he said that the people saw his acts but moses knew his ways he wants us to these ways are his attributes he wants us to be able to tell no this is not god because that's how we have a designing spirit that's how we can tell that what god wants us to do in this year we, we should cry for his mercy there's an aspect yes this has happened but there's a there's, there's a dimension there's a provision in god that is merciful let's begin to call like in the case of jehoshaphat where they started when three nations came they started singing of his goodness of his mercy and there was a response from god against their enemies so these attributes are things that helps us to know that look and we are not using like an atm machine or we just press this tab no it helps us to understand that look god wants us to understand and to know him to know his ways it doesn't mean we know everything about him but that way it helps us in our prayer life and that's what makes us to seek him because we know that oh yeah when we seek him he is diligent he will reward those who diligently seek him for god to become or act contrary to himself is unthinkable he will have to own god himself that is like strip himself deny himself it's almost like a self-destruction of himself for him to act contrary to those attributes god can never be unholy there are certain things scripture says of god that god cannot do things that god cannot lie god will not deny himself god will not partake in sin I mean, God will tempt no one with evil. I mean, there are certain things that God does because they are contrary to who He is. So even in His attributes of essentially who God is, they are they are like parameters, so to say, parameters whereby we say this can be this this we believe this is God, but we don't know we don't we know in part, but we don't think this can be God because God will never be an author of confusion, and so it helps us to be able to know, and not that we are predicting Him. But it also helps us to be able to discern between evil and good. You know, Hebrews 4 talks about Hebrews 5 that being having their senses exercised to discern evil from. So all these attributes are eternal, infinite, and immutable. So every attribute of God is eternal, meaning that it is without a beginning. It has no origin. It has no source. The source is God Himself. Infinite that is, it cannot be measured. It is inexhaustible. It's, um, it has no boundary, it's boundless and immutable means that it will not change. There is no fluctuation, there is no, uh, it doesn't get better at any attributes than it was before because those attributes are perfectly in him. There will never be a better version of those attributes. What fluctuates is actually the creatures. I mean, I can't say that the love of God I'm experiencing or you experience the same that we experienced years back. Because as we grow in our knowledge of Him, what is growing is not that God's love is growing. It's just like our experience of it is growing because we are growing, is revealing more of it to us. No matter what, those attributes don't change. But we are the ones that our level and our experience of those attributes is what changes because... Uh, either we are growing spiritually and then those attributes are now made manifest more through us and to us so god makes himself personal to us through the, i love this that god has made himself a personal god to us through his attributes without those attributes it will almost mean that god is an abstract being i mean it's just a phantom someone somewhere there that we really don't know much about we don't even know anything about and that can command honor and adoration and worship from our heart organic worship but in the place of the wisdom of god wow it makes god to be personal to us because he said call unto me he said, come, uh, say, if any man lack wisdom let him come to me so this attribute makes god to be personal to us makes god to a relational being to us it makes god to be our ever-present help 
Because when we talk about an attribute, for example, the peace of God, it makes God to be real, essentially, to us, tangible, so that in any situation and experiences we are going through, we know that there is something God is, or multiple things that God is, that we meet this situation. So they help us to make, to, 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 they help to make God to be personal to us, that our experience is love. The love is such that there is no length, breadth, I mean, there is no way that love can be measured. What can separate us from that love? The power of God as well, we strengthen our inner man with might. So, those attributes are there to make God a living or a reality to us, which is essentially the concept of the truth. The truth is that God now becomes real in our life through the person of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, obviously through the Spirit manifesting it now. His attributes are safe indicators of how God will act in any situation. I'm not saying that we can predict God, but I'm just saying that we can know God. We can't predict Him in terms of being, it's not unpredictable, let's, let's be realistic. God is not unpredictable in many instances. If somebody confesses that Jesus is Lord, we can't start saying that we don't know whether God will ask. No, God said, if anyone goes, whosoever, whoever calls upon me, God has said that. So we can predict to a certain measure about how God will respond. That Look, God says that he will not hear the prayer of a sinner. God says things like um, we should call upon him. God says, for example, that we should call to him, we show us great. There are things that God has said that when we do this, he's faithful that he will not deny himself. So, so they are safe that's why we call them safe indicators i initially thought maybe predictors but like we might not be interpreted well on some people's side but safe indicators of how god would act in any situation that god will always act righteously god will always act in wisdom the wisdom of god might be might I initially appear to be foolishness to the carnal mind because his wisdom doesn't mean that is uh, it doesn't mean that everything it does makes sense to the natural mind but in his wisdom it will always lead to the highest good of all the invisible god is made real to us through his attributes again so let's look at it this way romans 1 20 says that the invisible god that the visible world we see is um, um is god's is the invisible god making himself known to everyone so that they are without excuse even i'm proud my own, even if they don't if they claim not to hear the gospel or they don't know who, uh they they, they, they they don't have access to the bible they can't deny the fact that one is teaching about god <laughs> the wind everything around seems to that's why jesus said i'm the true vine i'm the bread of life the food as well the chair we're sitting on everything adding value to us is telling us they are not the reality that god himself is the true chair of life god himself is the true cloth that clothes our nakedness so these attributes are we could almost say that they are actually what makes god to be a to, for us to enjoy god let's put it that way because god is enjoyable yes like we quoted earlier from Psalm 34, say, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So God is enjoyable. They are actually how we, and the nutrients that makes us enjoy our living God. So through this attribute, though these attributes are numberless, but they are also unified as one essence. So it is one essence. It is one nature. It's not multiple nature. The nature of God or the being of God is one. But that being also now has different expressions, what we could call attributes. So when we see certain things, so this is the wisdom of God at work. This is the justice of God, or God ascribing them to Himself, like God is love, God is light, God is holy, God is good. So they are numberless. I can't claim to know all the attributes of God because this attribute, whatever God is, is infinite. And no matter where we find a lot of the attributes, especially the writings of the church fathers, um, systematic theology, and I mean, there are so many dimensions to it because. God is infinitely more than those things. Of course, it is to the measure He has revealed it to. But we can't say that those attributes of God, we know every one of them. Of course, I can list some that you find in a lot of materials. Maybe the wisdom of God, the power of God, the righteousness of God, the love of God, the truth of God, the justice of God, the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the providence of God. The list is endless. The knowledge of God. And this list, the munificence of God, the benevolence of God. The, I mean, the list is endless. And that's what because has been reviewed to it. It doesn't mean that is everything God is. <laughs> So, in his sovereignty, he shares some attributes with his creatures. So, that's what is often called communicable attributes. Attributes that God actually is delighted to see some of, see his creation 
be a partaker of because his love for example he wants us to love one another that will be emulating he wants us to act in wisdom that way we are not destructive to his creation he wants us to also act in power especially for us believers in christ so that we can make manifest god and because with power we need power so as because there's an opposition there's an op there's an there's an enemy and so they say we thou in the midst of your people so it is through power we are able to suppress the will and the desire of the opposition so that our god's kingdom will be made manifest in every sphere and there are some that are also referred to as incommunicable attributes these are attributes that belong to god and to god and god alone things like the infinity of god the sovereignty of god the immutability of god the eternality of god that is god without god being without beginning these are attributes that god does not share with any creature infinity is not shared nothing is infinite apart from god the absoluteness of god nothing is absolute apart from god because that is secluded for the sovereign one as well that's why they are often termed as incommunicable attributes god doesn't even share it with angels so it is holiness for example god shares that god wants us to be holy he wants us to be separate to be sanctified unto him that's why we have holy temple we have holy vessels we have the holy angels we have holy cities because they are set apart for god so that god could express himself through those channels so there's infinitely more about god's attribute than we can ever know or ever write about the words and there are no there are no sufficient words to express everything that god is because everything god is is infinite so they are what we know <laughs> and what we know is a drop what we don't know is an ocean <laughs> especially as it relates to god we only know in part anything we know of god is imperfect knowledge imperfect knowledge in terms of only god has perfect knowledge of anything and himself but of course whatever he reveals to us we don't that we will rejoice in it because it helps us but we can't claim that that is everything that is to know because that is what maybe our finite brain can comprehend so it's i mean like a little child you just don't a child that is born you don't start giving them solid food they are certain state they need to grow to to be able to take certain things so even for ourselves but this attribute for me especially it's the place whereby we are worshiping we are thanking him it helps us in our fellowship with him and also to be a medium through which this attribute can also shine as light through us to the world it is not that small that all of him should be comprehended by mortals god is not god is not that fine like god is not that yeah we say that okay there are seven eight eight incommunicable 15 or 24 communicable no no god is not that small god is infinitely beyond beyond our widest imagination and a lot i'm ever grateful to god for a lot of the writings of the church fathers they did extensive writings on them they, talking in terms of i can't even mention all their names because some of the names i know louis steven charnock as well aw toza andrew Murray. i mean a lot of this they, they this rich charles all this i mean they wrote things whereby you are like what and they help in worship and adoration of god they help to keep the mind out you said that will keep him in perfect peace whose heart is stayed on you so i said they look onto him and they were lighting and so we can see that this rich knowledge help us in our work with god and also in our work with one another if it could be fully grasped then it's not really worthy it's not deserving of our worship and adoration because what makes the angels to be saying holy 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 are you lord is because they are seeing a different dimension of god they've never seen it's not just rhetorics it's not just vain repetition <laughs> Holy means separate. That means God shows another dimension and they've been seeing it since, I don't know, I don't know how many thousands of years. And yet, that means there's multiple aspects that they've not seen of God. They see something new, the holy, holy, excuse me, Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. They help us in adoration of Him. They help us to bring peace to our hearts. And it also helps us to be a light, a reflection, or a vessel through which these attributes, especially the communicable ones, are that reach the world. What a joy to the glory of God. We bow in awe of Him because He is beyond our widest imagination. That God is beyond our greatest thoughts. God is beyond what we can say of Him. He is beyond what we can sing about Him. That's why um no matter because nothing is conceivable above god nothing is conceivable even parallel to him 
He said in Isaiah 46, and he said, Who are you going to compare me to? Who are you going to liken me to? So the joy and the glory of the Christian faith is that we are worshipping the true and the living God who is incomparable, whose match does not exist, who is his own class, in whom everyone say follow of him, through him, and to him are all things to whom be glory forever and ever. So it's a privilege. God is revealing these attributes to us because it's just helping us to know his ways. It's helping us at least to be able to be a vessel through which this attribute can be made manifest on earth. He alone can create out of nothing and as well as reduce to nothing. I don't know which attribute we are going to say. Maybe we call it aseity. Again, you can use as aseity is the Greek word A-S-I-T-Y, which is that God is his own origin. It didn't originate from anywhere. That is God. Anything God is, is because it exists in Him. He wasn't sourcing it from anywhere. So He created out of nothing and as well can reduce to nothing. But He doesn't reduce. He it is His goodness that made Him to make creation so as to so that there will be something outside of Him that can partake of some of this attribute. And also His justice as well can reduce those who think they are proud, those who think they are something into nothing so his attributes are his existence everywhere within creation so anywhere so god is present everywhere god is omnipresent and is omnipresent through the expression of these attributes that means anywhere i am god is there his wisdom is that available his powers are available. Another poor illustration, you have internet access somewhere. That means there's a lot of possibilities of different websites, different resources you could lay off just by that Wi-Fi. So let's now see that these attributes are everywhere and that's what makes, that's why God will say, call upon me. That's why God will say, look unto me. God will always direct attention to him. He says, look unto me, all ye ends of the world, and be ye saved. In that is Isaiah 45, 22. That is, God is saying that salvation is always available everywhere. And salvation is not just maybe giving our life to the Lord. It starts with that. But every day there is a salvation. That is, we are experiencing God anew. There, because there are multiple aspects of that salvation that we've not even experienced. There's a, there's a different, because salvation means that God becomes your wisdom in any situation. God becomes your strength in any scenario. God becomes your refuge. So that's why I say, Behold, today is the day of salvation. We rejoice in Him. His attributes are what makes Him different from His creatures. So, what mark the distinguish, the, as they say, the USP, that is the unified selling point, that this is what makes God unlike any other being. This is what makes God not to be an example of anything, that nothing is an example of Him. This is what makes God to be dissimilar. So these attributes are what distinguish God from every other thing, every other creature, anything He has made. Because His infinity, you won't find it anywhere else. And the things that you will find anywhere else, like His shares, like His wisdom, like His love, they are just a drop of an infinite ocean that exists in Him. And so what a joy that these attributes are they are wonderful they they help us so that when we are even reading the bible all through the pages of scriptures we will see this attribute so when we see for example you pick up the gospel and you're reading whether the account of matthew mark luke john you can now say this is the good god this is the compassion of god that is seeking like the widow of nay she wasn't even praying for the child to be but the compassion the love of god arose and went and brought that child back to life and so the goodness of his heart as well made him to see the john chapter 5 the man by the pool of bacteria and say hey get off from there and we can see his mercy everywhere so essentially the bible is giving us an account of the attributes of god so this attribute existed before there was a creation and we continue to exist beyond all of creation that is beyond even everything they do even these attributes are in god because they are not things that god was taught or god installed into himself they are actually who god is and these attributes are infinite all the attributes as they are infinite that is that they cannot be measured they are eternal so the holy spirit the last page is that of this person is that the holy spirit is in us to leave these attributes in us so one of the assignment or the key assignments of i believe of the spirit of god in us the spirit of christ is that so that we become a partaker of that divine nature because anything god is it takes god himself to manifest it I can have a car and loan someone my car. They, they, they drive the car without me. Two people can drive the same car, I mean, at the same time. But it's not such when it comes to God's attitude. God has to be the one manifesting it through those vessels. 
probably doesn't trust anybody to say that I'm giving you my holiness. No, it is himself in us is what makes us to be holy, makes us to be separate. Himself in us, that's why I said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 that Christ is made unto us wisdom from God, but it is of him. You are in Christ Jesus, who is made unto us wisdom, sanctification. So the Holy Spirit in us is essentially to make us, to make our life manifestation and expression to express these attributes through us the communicable attributes so that our life will be a marvel among men so today we're going to look at the topic that god's attributes are god himself meaning that these attributes are not things distinct from god we said an attribute is what god has said to be true about himself what god has revealed to his creation as things that are true about him god is holy god is light god is love god is good these attributes are numberless and we say that the mighty thing the mind can think upon is to think healthily upon God and God has made himself available God becomes real in our life through this attribute God becomes personal to us we can really it becomes relational to us because of this attribute and because of his love he sent his son to die for us and today his spirit is living inside of us to also continue the work the son did on the earth here so that we are now living testimonies of him we are still god is still manifesting in the flesh through these attributes walking in human vessels the members of the new creation in christ jesus what a joy to the glory and to the goodness of this great god hallelujah to god the father hallelujah to god the son hallelujah to god the holy spirit praise the lord hallelujah